Toxic oil is something that we find in just about every processed food in our cupboard and on our supermarket shelves. It's labelled vegetable oil, which is ironic because there's no such thing as an oil from a vegetable. The things that the processed food industry are putting into our food and labelling as vegetable oil are in fact oils or fats extracted using extreme chemical pressure heat processes from seeds. Seeds that were otherwise waste products, such as cotton seeds or soybeans. Those oils significantly increase our chances of contracting cancer and significantly increase our chances of our children having autoimmune diseases. That's a worry. It's a worry in and of itself. It's an even bigger worry when you realise that our consumption of these fats has increased from almost nothing in 1909 to almost everything now. What I mean by that is you cannot choose a product from a supermarket shelf in Australia that does not contain these oils. If the product has fat in it and it's in the processed food section of the supermarket, then the fat being used is in all likelihood oils extracted from seeds. Now why that matters is that these oils, whilst they look and behave in food the same way as the fats that we've eaten for generations and millennia, are actually chemically very, very different. Once these fats are inside our body, our body incorporates them into our cell membranes, as it does with every fat that we make or eat. The trouble is that these fats are much more prone to oxidation. You can see this for yourself. Take a tub of margarine, put it on the bench in the kitchen, leave it there for a week. It will be rancid, you will have to throw it out after a week. Do the same thing with butter, it will be fine. The reason is that the fats in the margarine reacted with the oxygen in the air. That's oxidation. That same thing is happening inside your body when you eat the margarine. Those fats are being incorporated into every cell membrane, into every cell in your body. And those fats are reacting with oxygen, which is pretty bad news given that oxygen is our fuel. It's like building a fireplace out of balsa wood rather than concrete. And when a cell membrane reacts with oxygen, it destroys itself, it falls apart. Destroy enough cells often enough and you create the circumstances which are perfect for the development of cancer. Which is why we are seeing in Western society everywhere that where we are exposed to these oils, rates of cancer increase dramatically. Younger and younger people are getting breast cancer, ovarian cancer, prostate cancer. More and more people are getting these diseases. Yes, medicine is better at treating them, but that doesn't mean less people are having them. It is now almost inevitable that an Australian will have some form of exposure, either themselves or a relative, during their lifetime to cancer. And that's because we have massively increased the consumption of a substance which directly leads to the development of cancer. And that's these seed oils. Now you might say to yourself, I don't cook in a seed oil. I don't use canola oil. I pan fry in butter. I use olive oil in the oven. I don't use this stuff. So you're talking to somebody else. Well, that's just not the case. Because even if you never ever open a bottle of canola oil, even if you never ever buy a bottle of rice bran oil, even if you never ever go anywhere near some grapeseed oil, you are still using these oils every day without realising it. Every loaf of bread sold in a supermarket contains seed oils. Look at the label, you'll see canola oil on it. Every packet of processed food contains seed oils. Even things that you would think should have no place having any fat in them whatsoever, such as, say, liquid breakfasts like sanitarium up and go. 
is full of seed oil. That's a problem. So even if you think you are not consuming seed oil, guess what? You are. And you're significantly increasing your rates of cancer and autoimmune diseases by doing it.